Now at 9, Joplin locals get in touch with their Aura Energy at Now and Zen's Aura Photo Day. Plus, Art Forms in Pittsburgh invites the community to make their own ceramic cups. And a bipartisan bill that would rework border security for the first time in decades could hit the Senate floor as soon as this week. I'm CB Cotton in New York. More on that story coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. A fire at an Oklahoma marina destroyed a restaurant but did not damage the boats. It happened just before 5 p.m. yesterday at the Arrowhead Yacht Club in Delaware County. Authorities say no one was on the property when it caught fire, but that the Yacht Club and its restaurants are a complete loss. None of the boats at the marina were damaged, but 10 days ago, three boats caught fire at the marina before being pushed away to avoid it spreading to the rest of the structure. Two people were injured in a fire at the University of Missouri School of Medicine Friday. Fire officials say there was a second alarm blaze inside a research lab on the seventh floor of the Medical Sciences Building. The lab was not in use at the time. Two people were taken to the hospital but have since been released. There were also reports of a possible explosion, but that hasn't been confirmed. The cause of the fire is remaining under investigation. Meteorologist Katie Frazier joins us with the first look at weather. Well, good evening, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful day. I know I did. We're starting off by looking at downtown Joplin, and it is a quiet night looking calm out there in downtown Joplin. And we are expecting mostly calm weather for the next several of days, but we are expecting more fog to develop overnight tonight. First, though, well, here's our temperatures across the region right now feeling like the upper 30s, not too bad, but of course you want to have a jacket if you're headed out anytime soon. And over the past several days, we've been a lot colder. In fact, our highs just a couple days ago were in this temperature range where what we're feeling right now. We had some cool temperatures down into the freezing mark. And then today we did see a high of 50 degrees. It was a good one. Well, warmer temperatures will return to the four state area as soon as tomorrow. But first, once again, overnight fog will be expected across the four states. Some of it could turn into freezing fog depending on how cold it gets in your community. So some slick spots will be expected tomorrow morning. Warmer temperatures are ahead and a quiet week of weather is expected. I'll have all these details broken down in my full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you soon, Katie. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs are headed to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. The Chiefs won the AFC Championship today against the Baltimore Ravens. Academy Sports in Joplin was ready for the celebration with AFC Championship gear, opening their doors to Chiefs fans after the game. We'll have highlights from the game later on in sports. Now in Zen in Joplin today hosted an Aura Photos Day for folks in the area. An Aura Photo Session allows people to learn about their chakra and aura energies through a hand sensor energy scan. For $40, guests received a full color printout and a multiple page analysis of their aura. I got a phone call from Sandra, the lovely lady that does the photos. And she said, hey, I'm going to be in town. Is this something you'd be interested in hosting at your store? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> For more on Now and Zen's future events, visit our website, koemnewsnow.com. The Art Forms Gallery in Pittsburgh today invited the community to create their own ceramic cups. Attendees were able to sculpt their mug and afterwards use materials from the event to make it their own. The gallery provided all materials and supplies for today's class. My brother got me into pottery. Um, he actually and his wife had taken classes in Wichita and he handed out Christmas presents and when I saw what he had done, I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. So I'm still doing pottery and he's not. So that's the way it works. Um, I mean, I don't do art in school anymore, but whatever I did, I like it was fun because like it took me out of actual class, but I like doing art like in my spare time sometimes. All that's left of a bronze statue of Jackie Robinson in Wichita, Kansas, is just a pair of shoes. The statue marks the gateway to the League 42 baseball fields, which comprises the youth baseball program named after the baseball legend. The theft was caught on surveillance video. T.J. Cleland reports the League 42 community is now searching for answers. 
It only was here yesterday, and it's gone today. It's truly unbelievable. In 2013, Bob Lutz had a goal, fill a void that needed filled in Wichita. And thus, League 42 was founded, a recreational baseball league that gives more kids the chance to play baseball without the extra costs that come along with it. It's been an honor to use his name. We don't take that lightly. Uh, it's not an accident. He's the reason, and he's been a central focal point of everything we do here. In 2021, the league unveiled the Jackie Robinson Pavilion to honor the league's namesake at McAdams Park, the host site of many League 42 games, with statues standing front and center until it wasn't. Uh, looks to be a dark colored pickup truck that may have taken the statue uh, sometime after 12 o'clock this morning. This feels like losing a member of my family. Um, That's what the statue was. Thieves tore down the statue, cutting it down above the ankles, then hauled the shrine away that weighed multiple hundred pounds. I would guess in the neighborhood of two to four hundred pounds, something in that. The only time I dealt with it was when it was taken off John's truck and it took three or four people to do that. Now as the search begins for the statue, it leaves many wondering why. You know, I'm just sad. If I had to say one word, that would be it. It's a very difficult day for League 42. The league is looking into whether they can find the mold for a new statue. Later, a new study shows how gene therapy can help restore hearing among kids with deafness. A new approach to tracking vision issues could also help determine early onset of a debilitating elderly disease. A new study says that 94% of patients diagnosed with PCA also had Alzheimer's. PCA is the decline of visual processing skills and degeneration in back regions of the brain. One researcher says PCA is the second most common presentation of Alzheimer's following memory loss. Symptoms include failure to recognize people, difficulty reading lines of text, and inability to judge distances. While it's still experimental, a new study is showing how gene therapy can restore the hearing of kids born with inherited deafness. Fox News correspondent Jackie Abanez takes a look at the medical marvel. Gene therapy is helping several kids born with inherited deafness to hear. <laughs> This, according to the results of a new study published in the journal The Lancet. The children in the research all had deafness caused by mutations in a gene involved in transferring sound to the brain. It happens to be a gene that um, where fortunately the rest of the inner ear is preserved and is um, healthy. Um, and so all that needs to be done in his particular gene a disorder is to replace that gene. Through surgery, doctors in the U.S. and China were able to place a working copy of the damaged gene into their inner ear. Mama. Mama. Five out of the six kids in China saw massive improvements after roughly half a year. They won't hear a thing. But after the treatment, they can hear and they can have a normal conversation. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia revealing similar results in an 11-year-old patient there. His hearing has improved from a, a state of complete and profound deafness with no sound at all to the level of mild to moderate hearing loss. The World Health Organization says roughly 34 million kids around the globe are deaf or have hearing loss, with genes responsible for up to 60% of those cases. In the future, doctors hope to advance this research to help more kids born with inherited deafness and potentially target other genes that cause different types of hearing loss. Jackie Abanez, Fox News. Katie is next with a complete look at the forecast. And later today is National Plan for a Vacation Day. We'll bring you the top travel trends in 2024. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful day. The weather was quite pleasant across the four state area, and we are expecting more pleasant weather to stick around with us. But of course, we have some holidays coming up. We have Valentine's Day just 17 days away, so maybe you'll start making some plans for your special 
family members, your loved ones to celebrate them on your Valentine's Day. Tonight we are expecting another round of fog just like we saw overnight last night through the early morning hours but tonight we will also have clear skies so that will definitely help fog to form throughout the next couple of hours. Doesn't look like it will be as thick as what we saw earlier on this morning but of course there's always a possibility. Let's get into our visibility tracker tracker once again the higher the number the better the visibility the lower the number the worse the visibility will be so throughout the next several hours it's actually saying no your visibility should be fine throughout late tonight but then as we move throughout the early morning hours you can see some locations will be seeing their visibilities drop especially folks out to the west but i do think everyone will have another good shot of seeing some fog develop late tonight and especially by early tomorrow morning seven o'clock if you're headed out taking the kids to school or headed off to work it is likely you'll see at least some patchy fog out and about temperatures will be around the freezing mark overnight tonight once again so we could have some freezing fog develop in locations not expecting it to be area wide but of course as you're heading out on the road tomorrow you just want to take it easy out there on the roads now for as as far as rain goes we're not looking at anything for the next several of days so you'll just want to look at our temperatures winds will be out of the south keeping those temperatures nice and warm for our monday tomorrow waking up temperatures will be in the 30s but we will have a nice day tomorrow temperatures surging up to the 50s by lunchtime and then we should even see mid to upper 50s across the region tomorrow we will have some more clouds move in but not looking at any rain whatsoever for tomorrow or the next several days back to the fog if you are going to be driving late tonight or very early tomorrow morning of course you want to drive with caution but you never want to use your brights because it helps to scatter the light it makes it actually harder for you to see what's in front of you bridges and overpasses could be slick it's not likely all of them will be but you just want to make sure you're driving very carefully as you're heading over those passes and of course leave space between you and cars around you. You, if you're going to um, enjoy the day tomorrow, which I would definitely recommend, temperatures will be nice in the mid 50s after school tomorrow. So you could take the family to the park, maybe just have a light jacket for the kids as you're headed outside. Your next several days looks like this with more AM fog expected for you tomorrow morning with temperatures approaching the 60 degree mark. They will stay in the 50s all week long and your next chance of rain doesn't return until the very end of the week. So mostly quiet weather is expected, so get outside and enjoy it. All right, thanks, Katie. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get a severe weather update sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Well, grab your sunglasses or skis because today marks National Plan for Vacation Day. And before you make your plans for this year's getaway, Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has a look at some of the travel trends of 2024. Whether it's the beach, I'm going to the Dominican, or a big city, I think I'm planning a trip to D.C. and a trip to Chicago. Now is the time to make your vacation plans for 2024. And as you are weighing how to spend your free time, these are some of the travel trends you should consider when building your dream itinerary. Executive editor of Lonely Planet, Nithya Chambers says social media is inspiring a lot of this year's bookings. People want to go eat the things they see. And I think food is increasingly like such a dominant part of the social media experience, such an interesting way to kind of think about the places we go and how we like literally consume them. Destinations we see on screens, also a big draw. Film and television inspired travel, like the White Lotus, the Bear, Yellowstone, um, really the sense of place um, and the places of personality in the show. Many travelers may be turning to AI to help book. It's really about what kind of traveler you are and where you are trying to create ease in the travel planning process. And so one of the great benefits I think of AI is it really is a powerful vehicle for content discovery. But while AI can be a helpful tool, Chambers says there's no substitution for human experience. That sort of someone who's thinking ahead and um, telling you the things you should know to make that curated experience amazing. Whether you're inspired by social media or prompted by AI, National Plan for Vacation Day is on January 28th and is the perfect opportunity to lock down your 2024 travel.
one huge opportunity and tip that I give people is to really start looking at the whole year. Really look at places, Thanksgiving, uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, like where can you just take a couple extra days and turn what was a three-day weekend into like a nine-day trip? And as you're making those plans, we saw airfare prices drop 9.4% from December 2022 to December 2023, according to NerdWallet Research. Hotel prices remained largely the same, and car rentals decreased 12% in the same period. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Coming up, Boeing back in action. Back in the air, the first Boeing 737 MAX 9 plane with passengers flies after a three-week grounding following a door plug blowout. I'm Madison Scarpino with that story coming up. Experts are weighing in on how experienced workers can land a new job in a competitive market. Those over 40 looking for new jobs may need a refresher when it comes to their job hunting skills. Job experts recommend you update your resume experiences, but don't attach dates to it. Instead, call those previous experiences earlier career. You should also research your company ahead of time and tailor your cover letter to meet their criteria. Experts recommended networking as much as possible and joining as many professional organizations as you can. The likelihood of securing a remote job is high for Americans open to working for an overseas company. Human resources company Adil cites in its State of Global Hiring report that American workers hired by international companies leaped up by 62 percent last year. And international companies want more American workers because of the worker pool size. Companies located in Canada, the UK, France, Singapore and Australia were the most interested in hiring Americans. The Boeing 737 MAX 9s are getting back into service three weeks after that door plug blew off an Alaskan airplane with passengers on board. And now airlines are trying to put this chapter behind them as travelers question safety in the skies. Fox News correspondent Madison Scarpino has details. I would need to return back to Portland. Air traffic control responding to an Alaska airline crew during an emergency landing incident earlier this month. A mid-air blowout of a door plug at 16,000 feet. Nobody injured, but airlines were then forced to cancel thousands of flights. Now they're back in business following the temporary grounding by the FAA of Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes. One of those planes in the fleet landing in Portland over the weekend, coming from Las Vegas. Passengers on board saying the flight began with the captain coming out of the cockpit to thank them for being on board said his thing about the, the crew and everything, which they haven't done that. So I think he was trying to make everyone feel better. Airlines were forced to complete inspections to make sure the MAX 9s are ready to carry passengers safely. Now there are concerns the companies manufacturing the planes are prioritizing speed and profit over safety. But those traveling in airports across the country are saying they are mostly comfortable flying in the MAX 9s again. Getting on the plane is inherently a slight risk whenever you do it, so because risking getting in a car. I, I think it's fine. I think it's still very safe to fly. Industry experts say the airlines need to be more thorough in production and work to rebuild their reputation following the door plug blowout. By the time the NTSB and the FAA get done with this, it's going to get uglier before it gets better. Lawmakers are now calling for public hearings about the 737 MAX 9 planes. In Atlanta, Madison Scarpino, Fox News. Up next, the Super Bowl is right around the corner and both Cheetos and Doritos are releasing new flavors just in time for the big game. Well, your chicken wings and buffalo chicken dip may have some competition this year when it comes to snacks for the Super Bowl game. Cheetos announced on Friday that they would be dropping the new crunchy buffalo flavor already in stores. The new flavor combines the cheesiness of the regular Cheetos with the heat of beloved buffalo sauce. Doritos also launched new flavors this month just in time for the highly anticipated football game matchup. The new Danamita chips feature tastes like flaming hot queso, hot honey mustard, smoky chili queso, and tangy fiery lime. 30 more minutes of news, weather, and sports coming your way. A major bipartisan border deal is expected to move forward this week. We'll have the details coming up. 
The Senate hoping to move forward this week on a major deal to rework the way the U.S. controls its southern border. As a record number of migrant crossings continue to overwhelm authorities and put a spotlight on the White House ahead of the 2024 election. Fox News correspondent C.B. Cotton has more. A bipartisan bill would be good for America and help fix our broken immigration system and allow speedy access for those who deserve to be here. President Biden on Saturday making a lofty promise to lawmakers if they can get a deal done on immigration. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. The White House has been working with a bipartisan group of senators for weeks to reach an agreement on the first major overhaul of the country's immigration system since the 1990s. Among the changes, it would reportedly give the White House the authority to deny asylum seekers when migrant crossings surpass a certain number. When we can no longer detain and deport, when we can't process the people and actually make a decision right there at the border, then we'll actually turn those folks back around to Mexico and say we can no longer do this. Current U.S. law allows most migrants to request asylum even if they enter the country illegally. It takes sometimes five to ten years for somebody to get their asylum claim heard. Um, that's not fair to anybody, including the migrant, that it takes that long. We would um, shorten that time frame down to six months in some cases, uh, and then it would would get people work permits faster. But even if a deal is reached in the Senate, it still faces an uphill battle in the Republican controlled House, with former President Trump also urging GOP lawmakers to vote against it. A lot of the senators are trying to say respectfully they're blaming it on me. I said, that's OK, please blame it on me. I'd rather have no bill than a bad bill. Senators involved in the negotiations hope to unveil an agreement as early as this week. In New York, CB Cotton, Fox News. House Republicans are moving closer to impeaching Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas over what they consider to be his failure to secure the country's southern border. Today, they took a big step in that direction by formalizing their allegations ahead of a committee vote. The GOP, GOP lawmakers say Mayorkas has shown what they're calling a willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. The House Committee on Homeland Security is scheduled to meet on Tuesday morning to move forward in the impeachment process. In response to the Department of Homeland Security issued a memo accusing the Republicans of undermining efforts to achieve bipartisan solutions. The memo said the GOP's assertions about Mayorkas are baseless. Tragedy striking U.S. forces in the Middle East after three American soldiers are killed by a drone strike on a U.S. military base in Jordan. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson has the latest. A major escalation in what is already a very tense situation in the Middle East. U.S. Central Command says three soldiers were killed and at least 34 others were hurt after a drone attack late Saturday night on a military base known as Tower 22 in northern Jordan. It's the first time U.S. troops have been killed after months of attacks on American forces. The White House is blaming the strike on Iranian-backed militias operating in Iraq and Syria. President Biden on Sunday vowing the U.S. would answer. The drone strike hit the sleeping quarters at the base, which may have contributed to the number of casualties. Several Republican senators on Sunday called for the U.S. to retaliate directly against Iran, a sentiment echoed by some former military leaders. Attacking the proxies is something we should do, but we should also look at targets in Iran and send a strong message to not only Iran, but to Iran's backers, uh, which would be China and Russia. A strike inside Iran could lead to a much larger war something top U.S. officials had hoped to avoid. We don't want to go down a path of greater escalation that uh, drives to a much broader conflict um, within the region. The names of the three American soldiers killed will be released following next of kin notifications. At the White House, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. Later, retailers and vendors looking to combat retail theft using tech. Happy Sunday, everyone. It was a pleasant day across the four states, and we are expecting more pleasant weather over the next several days as well. But 
We had fog this morning and we are expecting more fog to develop overnight tonight as well. Let's talk about our temperatures. We are going to cool down into around the freezing mark. It looks like most of us will stay just above, but we could have some locations hit freezing overnight tonight. That could even allow some freezing fog to develop, but overall not looking at a lot of freezing fog across the region. Let's talk about visibilities. Once again, the higher the number, the better visibility. The lower the number, the worse your visibility could be. Now, this is just one forecast model, and this one is actually going a little bit easy on the fog, not saying too much will develop overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. However, I am going to say there's a decent chance that most of you will see at least patchy fog across the region tomorrow. So this is five o'clock in the morning. You could see visibility is getting around to about five miles of, that's how far you could see in front of you. And then as we move into the seven o'clock hour, you could see even lower visibilities will be possible. Once, and uh, once again, just keep in mind, you'll wanna take it easy out there on the roads, drive safely and never use your brights when we do have fog out there. As far as rain goes, we are not looking at really anything for the next several days, just looking at some pleasant weather. Certainly a good week to get outside. This is later on tonight. You could see clear as can be with winds out of the south. That's really going to help our temperatures warm up throughout the next couple of days as well. Overnight tonight, as you uh, wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be in the 30s, so certainly chilly. You want to have the jacket by then, but you might even be able to shed it off by the afternoon tomorrow. Lunchtime will be in the upper 40s, low 50s, and then we should have our forecast highs across the region in the mid, even upper 50s across the four states tomorrow. Some clouds will be possible throughout the day, but overall not looking at any rain for tomorrow or the next several days. If you're headed back to school tomorrow, once again, temperatures in the 50s with just that a.m fog. So as you're taking the kids off to school, just take it easy out there on the roads. Winds will be out of the southwest five to ten miles per hour tomorrow. And of course, you might want to take the family out to a park after school. Three to five temperatures will still be in the 50s by then. So you want to have a light jacket, definitely, or just have a jacket in the car. But it would be a good day to spend some time outdoors. Your next several days looks like this. Another round of morning fog tomorrow. Temperatures approaching the 60 degree mark will stay in the 50s for all week long. In fact, Thursday looking warm with 62 as your forecast high as of right now. Next chance of rain not coming in until Friday and Saturday. It is low as of now, but of course that can change and then cooler temperatures look to return by this upcoming weekend. Coming up in sports, the Pitt State softball team prepares to open their season later this week. Plus, the Kansas City Chiefs look to punch their ticket to Super Bowl 58. Brock Baldridge has highlights from that game and more up next. Four trips to the Super Bowl in five years. That is what the Kansas City Chiefs are aiming for as the Chiefs take on the Ravens in Baltimore with the season on the line. Kansas City versus Baltimore in the AFC Championship game. Winner goes to the Super Bowl. Opening drive of the game for the Chiefs. Mahomes to Travis Kelsey with an unbelievable catch in the end zone. Kelsey swiftly passes Jerry Rice for the most postseason receptions in NFL history. 7-0 Chiefs. Lamar and the Ravens, on the other hand, well, they look to answer. Lamar somehow avoids the sack. And that buys himself enough time to deliver a lightning strike to the end zone to save Flowers. He catches it. Touchdown, Ravens. We're all tied up 7-7. So we head to the second quarter now. Chiefs knocking on the door. Isaiah Pacheco is going to plow through the great wall of Kansas City that's in front of him. Chiefs take a 14-7 lead. We fast forward to the fourth quarter now. Ravens are in the red zone. Lamar Jackson completes to Zay Flowers. Looks like he's going to score, but the ball pops free. Tripp McDuffie recovers it, and the Chiefs take over with a touchback. And then just two minutes to go. Third and nine. Baltimore's all-out timeouts. Look who saves the day. Marquez Valdez-Scantling with a game-clinching catch to send the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. Kansas City is on their way to Las Vegas. The Chiefs win this game 17-10. No, you don't, you, don't, you don't take it for granted either. Um, you never know how many you're going to get to um, if you're, or if you're going to get to any. Um, and so it truly is special um, just to do it with these guys after what we've been through all season long, guys coming together. Um, it really is special, but uh, I, I told them, I mean, the job's not done. I mean, our job now is to prepare ourselves to play a good football team in the Super Bowl and try to get that ring. 
in Santa Clara, California. It's the NFC Championship game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions. Opening drive of the game, it's the Lions who get a reverse sweep to Jamison Williams. He cuts through the middle and he is gone for 42 yards. Touchdown Detroit. The Lions would actually get out to a 17 point lead in this game. But here come the Niners. In the third quarter, Detroit leads 24 to 10. Brock Purdy completes to Brandon Ayuk for the touchdown. It's now a three point game, Niners trail. In the fourth quarter, it's the Niners who lead by three. It's Eliza Mitchell who runs up the middle to make it a two score game. Touchdown Niners, they now lead it by 10. So Detroit answers that with their very own touchdown. So they'll need, get, need to get the ball back and they opt to go the onside kick. George Kittle recovers it and the San Francisco 49ers survive again. 49ers beat the Lions 34 to 31 and they are crowned NFC champs. So here we go, Super Bowl 58 is set. The Kansas City Chiefs will travel to Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada to face the San Francisco 49ers. The Chiefs aim for their fourth straight Super Bowl title in franchise history, or just fourth ever Super Bowl title. The Niners aim for their sixth Super Bowl title in franchise history. This game is scheduled for February 11th. Kickoff is at 5.30 p.m. on CBS. Well, don't look now, but the college softball and baseball season begins later this week. Pitt State softball makes their final preparations ahead of the 2024 season. Pitt State opens with their season this Friday as the Gorillas travel to Conroe, Texas for the Division II Fast Pitch Invitational. Pitt State enters year three of the Jenny Fuller era. The Gorillas finish with a 27-21 record in 2023. Pitt State was second in the MIAA in batting average last season. Well, this year's team looks to push themselves to a new level. Well, this is my third season, so I think the players have a better understanding of how I coach and what I expect, and our culture has been really built up, and we have that winning mindset, so I think that that's been a big change, and our team steps on the field and expects to win now. I think this was the most I've ever challenged a team and pushed them to their limits, and I think that that will pay off. I think the expectations are high, even though uh, we were ranked at 7th or 7th or 8th. I think that we can surpass that if we set our minds to it and um, do everything we can to win. So softball season's already coming up. It looks like football season's going to be extended. Absolutely. It'll be exciting for sure to see the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We'll be right back. Retailers are looking to cut their losses and protect their bottom lines. And technology may be the answer. Fox Business correspondent Jerry Willis checks out the hot decades old tech being touted by retailers and vendors to combat retail theft. So you've got some tech in this jacket. Tell us. Absolutely, Jerry. Thank you. I, what we do have here is an integration of the technology of the digital identity, if you'd like, that provides visibility throughout the supply chain. And if you look at it, you can hardly see it, it's on the seam here. Effectively, it's this piece of uh, small technology element that allows you to have visibility from an end-to-end -end supply chain. It's pretty cool technology. It's actually a silicon chip that is connected to an antenna and as such transmits its identity as it goes through different uh, read points of the supply chain. So I might never notice that and it benefits the consumer as well as the retailer, correct? Absolutely it does. It also allows you to have frictionless retail. Think about it, you go to a store, you grab something, you just walk out. We're going to show you how fraud works with this technology. Let me show you. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm not getting away with the tennis balls. That's not happening. Absolutely. So this is what you've done here is because this item had not been purchased, the, the system knows that this unique identity has, uh, is, is obviously still within the retail. So when you grab it and walk out, the, the system triggers an alarm. In New York, Jerry Willis, Fox Business. Up next, a vocal duo goes from the Emmys to the Grammys. We'll take a look up next. Vocal duo The War and Treaty go from the Emmy stage to the Grammys. Fox caught up with them to talk about having all of these experiences together as husband and wife being nominated at music's biggest night and what's coming up next for them. Here's Fox's Ashley Devorkin. There is heaven, there is earth, there's a lot to be thankful for. Husband and wife singer-songwriters Michael and Tanya Trotter, The War and Treaty, performed the In Memoriam tribute at this year's Emmy Awards. It's such a blessing. I mean, you know, um, this is just living proof that when you work hard and you step out on faith, faith kind of things happen. And uh, for us to be able to take the stage, 
um, with, with Charlie Puth, who's a phenomenal talent, um, and to present a piece that's going to mean so much to so many people. It's just a huge honor to be here at the 75th Emmys. They spoke about how their connection is at the heart of all they do. Our connection, our unity, our marriage, um, even our children, our parents, our family, you know, to know that at the end of the day when people are not there, she's always there and I'm always here for her. That's the key ingredient to uh, us working. It's all or nothing. From here, the duo go to the Grammy Awards as nominees and there's new music on the way. Trying to still wrap my minds around we're nominated for Grammy, two Grammys has just been incredible. We've been, we just finished our record. We um, recorded a record in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. So we're very excited about at that. Fame. Yeah, at the Fame studio. When yeah. When is album release? Uh, we can't say when. We can't say when. But we do we'll have do. the first single to that album is coming out February the 2nd. Yeah. It's called Mr. Fun. So be on the lookout for that. I think that a lot of people are gonna gonna like it and take to the song. Have you in Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll leave you with video of Pops in a Couture Canine at Fashion Show. We'll see you back here next time. From all of us in the studio, have a great night.